Good morning. This is Jody Souls from Wild Birds Country Store. We're located at 783 South Main Street in Great Barrington. And I really appreciate the pro project that you all are doing at the school. And I would like to share with you a little bit about my love of nature. Uh, birds have been a passion of mine since I was 10 years old and started in the Girl Scouts. As you can see, I'm not 10 years old any longer, and I've had this hobby for quite a long time. So let me talk a little bit about the birds. First of all, do you know what the state bird of Massachusetts is? It's the chickadee. The chickadee has specific feeding habits. It goes to a bird feeder, it takes out one seed, it goes to a tree branch and cracks it open. So when you talk about bird feeder designs, bird feeding and birds have different habitats and habits that they do when they need to get their seed. Not all birds are feeder birds. So when I talk to you about the common feeder birds, it's going to be chickadees, nuthatches, tufted titmouse, woodpeckers, downy woodpeckers, hairy woodpeckers, red-bellied woodpeckers, goldfinches. This is going to be a big finch year, so I'm talking to you about house finches, goldfinches, common red poles, pine siskins. They will feed on the ground. They will also come to your feeders. Black oil sunflower seeds are the favorite of all birds. What we do with them and what we add to the black oil sunflower seeds can make a difference on also who you attract. So one of the features that a chickadee would want was just a quick perching place, whether it's a metal rod or it's just a little part of your feeder, um, you would just have a seed there, can be under a roof or can be in an open area. One of the most specifics, and I would like you to keep this in mind when you are designing, is our cardinals. Because we all know our cardinals and love the r bright red color of a cardinal. They have short fat necks and short stubby feet and they like to face their food. So if you would like to have a cardinal come to your feeder, you have to be specific in your placement. You have to have it within eight feet of trees or shrubs. And you have to have a wide open platform and a high roof. So they will sit there, they will come early in the morning and they will come late at night to your feeder. They love black oil sunflower seeds. They also like a safflower seed, which all are grown in the United States. Thistle seed is for our finches. Our finches like to sit. They're, I call them my gossip birds because they just sit. They go like this and they're constantly hulling and taking, which means taking the shell off the seed. They like niger thistle seed, but they will also eat sunflower seed. They perch and sit there and sit there and sit there. So if you want to have the finches come, you need to have several perches on your feeder. Another favorite bird I like to come are the woodpeckers. There are three different species here. The most common is the downy woodpecker. He's a six inch bird. He likes to come to seed. He likes to come to nuts and he also likes to come to suet. So if you'd like to add a suet feeder to your design, that would be a small cage that's usually around six inches, which is the size of a downy woodpecker. That is rendered beef fat. You can get it at the meat market or you can get it in a bird store and we sell them in small cakes. And that gives a high carbohydrate diet to your birds. So you just put that on the side. They will tripod, which is perch with their tail underneath and they will just peck, peck, peck. They can be underneath or it can be on the side of your feeder. All birds will eat it in the winter time. I don't know how you choose just one bird. I find that very hard. So when you're considering your design, consider for the bigger birds and the smaller birds, unless your space is very limited 
And then if you only have a small space, just realize you're going to get the smaller birds. But if you have an open platform and you only have a small suction cup or something like that, realize you might only get a small chickadee or a goldfinch coming to your feeder. The bigger birds are going to be your blue jays, your grosbeaks, your bigger woodpeckers like your red-bellied woodpeckers, your cardinals. It's usually when we talk about bigger birds, we're talking about any bird that's six inches or more. Most of our smaller birds are four inches and they usually weigh about a half an ounce. Their weight is all feathers, and you, we all know that feathers don't weigh that much. But the birds, to protect themselves, puff themselves up, puff up their feathers. They stick their legs under their feeders. That's another reason why you might want to have a perching area. Because if you'll see when they're out there in the cold winds, they puff up their feathers, they'll stick a leg underneath covering over their feet, and they'll sit there and eat at your feeders. There are two things that attract birds to one another, and that is through their colors and through their songs. If you notice, the males are the most dominant and brightly colored. That's because they need to attract a female. They also do it by their song. So the birds that have the prettiest song get the best birds. Crows and ravens are some of your biggest birds. They will scavenge, they eat the dead animals that are killed by the side of the road. But you can also get them to come to your feeding area by feeding them peanuts. I always play a game and I have crows that come here. I bang my scoop out there and I put out peanuts and they call to one another. The Blue Jays will also play this game and they will pick up peanuts, put them down. These are peanuts that are in the shell. Put them down. They weigh them. They want to take the heaviest peanuts with the biggest and, and the most peanuts in the shell. So if you want crows and ravens to come, put a, a nice area. And I hear the crow right now outside there saying, come out with my peanuts. So just put a lot of peanuts on a railing or in your big open feeder. But just realize in that area, the smaller birds won't come when the crows are there. When you are considering your design for your feeders, I would like to have a nice perching area. It can just be a small side, uh, um, about an inch in diameter. Can keep in mind your cleanliness. So you've got to have somewhere that the weather is going to drain through, whether it's rain or snow or hail or anything like that. I prefer a roof over their head. Um, just because that does protect the seed because I like to use a seed mixture that is a mixture of hulled seed and seed with the shells on. So cleanliness is important, perching area is important, and an overhead roof to protect your seeds from getting wet. Uh, when you're thinking about a perching area, it can be anything from a 12 inch, think the size of a ruler, um, a piece of wood or anything like that. It doesn't have to be uh, just a metal small perching area. You can think of just a square area with higher sides on each side. A raised lip would be very important when you're using your feature. A lot of birds do like to perch that you will notice if you start to study their claws. Birds also feed on the side of trees because they get bugs and insects. So once you're studying your birds, you will notice that sometimes they have claws where it's three toes or four toes. They have a back claw. A lot of times think of how they're gripping branches and that's what they're going to do to the side of your feeder. So you Keep it rough because, again, you what you're bringing to your feeder is you're mimicking nature. When you are designing your feeders, please consider a roof. Open platforms are very nice feeders when it's just dry weather. But we all know that we have snow and inclement weather in the winter in the Berkshires. So a roof would be a nice design to keep the food dry. If you have a shell on, which our black oil sunflower seed does, 
you don't have to have a roof you can just have an open feeder but a roof is nice if you have what's called hulled seed meaning you have the shells off if you want to put um, a feeder on a window with suction cups that's a wonderful thing to do again it's really nice if you have a tree branch or some tree shrubs close by again that the birds can go to for shelter uh, that's a nice thing to do uh, some of the window feeders have covers over them some of them are open so again think about is your window open with no trees around that's going to be a cold area for the birds you might want to think about being on the south side of the house where you put your feeders because that's usually a warmer area the north side is where you get your open and your winds so that's going to be a very cold area think about the birds they're out there in 20 degrees and the winds whipping up in the snow so maybe you want to build them a little shelter have a roof on your window feeder but yes it's a wonderful way to study the birds you learn how to draw the birds you learn their feather colors you learn they're just not one color most of um the feeders that I use and that I have experienced do not have water attached to them. I do sell one particular window feeder with suction cups that has a small water area. Usually it gets jostled or it freezes up in the winter time. Water is an important component. So if you're considering water, I would just use a bird bath or if you have an open pond or river or spring nearby that's where the birds get water one issue that you want to consider with your seed is you want to keep it dry if at all possible you want to be very careful because you don't want your seed to get moldy uh, moisture will create a, a, a area that is unhealthy if you get mold uh, mold can cause many problems uh, and you always need to keep your feeder area clean. So you need to clean your feeder usually once a month um, and I would not like you to clean it with um, Lysol or any of the other um, smelly products that your parents sometimes have to clean their floors. I like to keep things natural and I recommend that you clean it with white vinegar and water and that brings no scent also no cleaning scent to your feeder area there are um, different kind of birds out there the ones that i have specifically talked about because you're building a bird feeder are the ones that come to bird feeders you can also build a fruit feeder um, a lot of the fruit loving birds are here in the summertime. You get the gorgeous orange of a Baltimore Oriole. You can get a rose breasted grosbeak who will come to fruit. Your butterflies will come to fruit. They especially like rotted fruit. Uh, so you can build feeders um, and put a fruit component on there. Uh, woodpeckers, cardinals will also eat um, apples pomegranates thank you i hope you all enjoyed building your feeders uh enjoy the birds and if i can ever ask or answer any questions please feel free to ask me again this is jody bye